welcome to our studio again. I know recently we have recorded a program on your testimony and how God was able to transform your life from a life of despair and darkness into a victorious life yes. that you are living today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us again. Um, today we are going to talk about your third book that you have authored, Fishers of Men. So talk to us about Fishers of Men and the intent behind it. I wrote Fishers of Men in 2020 because, uh, like I had mentioned on the other show, a lot of people come to faith in Jesus Christ, yes. and they don't really know where to go from there. So the New Beginnings book is really the foundation that, it, just like building a house, you have to put a solid foundation before you can build on it. And New Beginnings is uh, what is sin, what is salvation, who is Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, what is the Bible, uh, what is communion, tithing, and uh, prayer. That's great. And then... And that's this book yes, right here. Yes, and that is in Farsi. That, that, that's been translated into Farsi, and we have it available both on Shabake7.tv as well as on Telegram. It's ready to be downloaded into Far, um, in Farsi. And so right. that's the foundation of Christianity that you wrote, New Beginnings. Right. And then Fishers of Men was the um, sequel to New Beginnings. And I wrote this book because now that we have the foundation laid, but there are no walls and there's no roof, then how do we continue in our faith? So this book, Fishers of Men, is about to be translated into Farsi in a couple of months, and we'll make that available to you, Perfect. to Iran Alive. And it has subjects like having passion for Christ, uh, laying the foundation, surrendering our lives to Him, servanthood, spiritual gifts, sharing our faith, and the victorious life. That's awesome. And so these are, it's an explanation of how to continue in our faith. Uh, there's scriptures in the New Beginnings book. The scriptures are actually in the book because a lot of people don't have a Bible right. to learn the basics of Christianity. And then Fishers of Men has a lot of scriptures to back up uh, the text that I wrote. That's amazing. And I know that the very first book you wrote was um, Be Transformed. So um, I know we talked about this um, briefly in our previous program. Could you um, talk to us about um, how God really transformed your life and what, was, what instigated you to write a book called Be Transformed? I was uh, teaching, I've always been a teacher, and uh, I was teaching a women's group at my church, and there were women there that had been Christians for 50 years, and then there were women who had come out of addiction. Right. Some were from, uh, you know, straight off the street. Some had some small children. And so I was trying to find material that would be able to speak to this very interesting group of women. And I really couldn't find anything. Right. Either it was too deep or too shallow or it wasn't biblical right. or it wasn't, it just didn't speak to life, you mm -hmm. know, speak life into our group. And so I, uh, I wrote Be Transformed. It wasn't really supposed to be a book, but uh, I kept bringing these pieces of paper into the group, into the Bible study. And the women were saying, this, these pages are changing my life. So um, you need to put this into a book, Sharon, and I hadn't even thought about it. I've always been, you know, an English, you know, nerd, and, uh, but I had never thought about writing a book. So anyway, I uh, finally put the book together. Uh, all of the papers came together into book form, and we have heard that tens of thousands of people's lives have been transformed. We actually have a huge prison ministry, and we've sent out over 35,000 books to prisons, jails, and rehabs in the United States, as well as in eight different countries, and it's been translated now into five languages. Cool. And Be Transformed is also in Farsi, available on the website and yes. uh, Telegram. Telegram. That's Iran amazing. Alive. So the inspiration behind Be Transformed was really out of the need for content that are biblical, that are Christian based and so you just put together your thoughts your teachings in and uh, turned it into a book for others to use. That's amazing 
I took the subjects that are in it, uh, anxiety, guilt, forgiveness, things like that, and I looked in the scriptures to find out what God said about these issues in our right. lives that we all face. Yes. And it was more important for me to get God's you know, perspective on it than just my wisdom or what I had come through. And so it was sort of that coupling of the scriptures, God's wisdom and discernment, and my own experiences. And I did a lot of healing when I wrote that book. Mm. That's good. I had a lot of healing because it was it was cathartic for me yes. to um, to write out my feelings and write out what did I really think about these things and right. how they had affected me. That's awesome. So, um, Sharon, you um, having such powerful story about your life and how what kind of life you had lived and the way you have such victorious life today and you're living it out um, writing books to be able to make it make a significant impact on the lives of others that is such an inspiration mm -hmm. to me and I'm sure to so many of our audience that are watching this uh, it, it it creates it brings hope to the heart of those that have probably lived in the darkness and have lived in despair and hopelessness, probably drug addictions as you have experienced, probably having suicidal thoughts um, in their lifetime and seeing how God's hand has been in your life, transforming your life and bringing you to where you are making an impact is, is tremendous. It's, it, it, it's just heartwarming to see that. Um, and to me, it's an example of how God can turn really our yes. pain into something beautiful. Uh -huh. And uh, today, I know as the audience is watching this, if you are going through despair, if you are going through hopelessness, know this, that the same God that transformed both Sharon and I's lives is able to give you hope yes. and to bring to bring a future for you that you would fulfill your destiny through. Um, Sharon, you probably wrote these books because you walk this path in needing some spiritual um, teachings, biblical teachings to stand by and to really become a disciple of Jesus Christ. As you mentioned, Fishers of Men was inspired because you want you um, wanted to really let the world know what does it really mean to be a disciple of Christ? Is that right? Yes, uh, I think that a lot of times you know people just say we'll go to church, we'll accept Jesus, and then we'll go to church, and we hear a sermon once a week, and then we go back to our lives. And there's no one. Many churches that we visited don't have discipleship. You know, even new beginnings, they don't have that foundational class. Right. And then they don't have the what to do after you've been taught the foundation. And so they're they're kind of lost. Like right. I go to church, I read the Bible, so I don't really understand it all that much. But so who is there to teach them? And so these books really help. It is it's actually vital that you find a small group, that right. you find someone to mentor you that is, a, you know, farther than you in your journey. But the books can help to guide you mm -hmm. into what to do next. And it's very practical. It has practical applications so that it's not just a storybook, yes. but it's something like, how can I do this? What do I do next in order to get to the next level and we are to mature in Christ. Yes. We're not to stay babies drinking milk all of our That's lives. Right. We're supposed to eat the meat of the word and we're supposed to mature. And we, uh, my husband and I believe that once someone is discipled and they're trained in how to now share their faith, that that is the end result. That is the fruit that we bring is other souls with us yes. to Jesus. Yes. Um, Sharon, and I know um, the title of this message is Fishers of Men. Um, and I know that, you know, our, our focus is to talk about discipleship and the importance of it. And why is it even important um, to go through discipleship and become a disciple of Christ? But I don't know why maybe the audience um, that's watching this program um, needs to hear this. I keep on hearing um, talk about anxiety, talk about anxiety. I'm not sure why, 
we're going to circle back and talk more about discipleship. You mentioned uh, Be Transformed. You cover that topic. Um, I know that um, Iranians that I receive testimonies from, um, most of them deal with uh, the issue of anxiety, worries of life, which then um, um, ultimately lead to depression and, um, mm -hmm. and hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that you may have walked um, that path, could you speak about as believers, as someone who is bought by the blood of Jesus, we are called his children. Um, how can one get rid of anxiety and worries and be at complete peace as the Lord wants us to be? That's a really great question, Lily. I believe that we need to read our Bibles daily. Uh, so many Christians I hear, they say they read their Bibles occasionally when they feel like it once a month. And I, I just makes me feel like I'm starving. Mm -hmm. I read the Bible mostly every day. And it's not that I'm this wonderful Christian. It's that I have to have mm -hmm. the word in my life because it's truth. It's stable. It gives me God's perspective yes. on things. It feeds my soul. It gives me peace and joy and stability in my thinking right because if i get off on my thinking i will be down a rabbit trail in no time i will be confused and i will be up, upset and if i look at this world and you know what's going on in it and keep my eyes on that instead of on jesus yes instead of on his word then i will not have peace yes because there is no peace he jesus says my peace i leave with you yes it's not of this world it's from me yes and so i think if we keep our mind on jesus it doesn't mean we put our head in the sand and pretend things aren't going on right it's important to know what's go what's going on around us but to get true peace, we must uh, keep our eyes on Jesus. The Bible says to fix our thoughts on him. Yes. And to that just means praying throughout the day, just every single minute, just, Lord, help me with this. What do you think about this? How do I deal with this situation? And he will yes. give you the peace that you are seeking. Absolutely. And the word of God in Philippians says, do not worry about anything. Do not be anxious about anything, but pray for all things. And God the Father will give you peace in your heart and in your mind. He covers you in His peace. Your mind and your heart need to be covered in complete peace that only He gives to you. The peace that transcends all understanding. Not the peace that this world gives us, but the peace that comes only through Him. So pray continuously and know that God the Father loves you. Jesus loves you. And He sent His Holy Spirit to equip you, to empower you, to live a victorious life that He has in store for you. Thank you for covering that. Mm -hmm. So you and I, I um, my background, I um, was born into a Muslim family. I didn't know Christ. The only thing I knew about Christ was that he was one of the greatest prophets mm -hmm. who performed many miracles. And that's what I was taught in Iran when I grew up in Iran. Um, you um, walked a different path. You uh, didn't know anything about Christ. And then you just you know, kneeled down one day and asked him to enter your life. Um, in a way, we both have experienced that transformation, and mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't have the foundation. I didn't know anything about Jesus, none of the apologetics, none of no, nothing about him. Um, but I had to become a disciple, and I'm mm -hmm. a I'm a work in progress. I'm still becoming a disciple mm -hmm. until I, I meet Jesus. You, um, I'm sure as well, you wrote uh, books about discipleship. Mm -hmm. So when one becomes a believer, and they say, they declare by, by their mouth that they um, that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, and they believe Him, they believe in their hearts that He is their Lord and Savior. What's the next step? I would, uh, again, the, I, I just want to reemphasize reading God's word in uh, a translation that is easily understood. Mm -hmm. There are, I just need to preface that with, there are translations that are not 
biblical. Mm -hmm. They are they go too far away f uh, from the text. Yes, and they are more someone's uh, opinion about what the Bible says. And so you need to find out what is still a biblical book, uh, but but a translation that's not so ahead of you that you can't. You're not going to read it if you don't if you really can't understand right. it. Right. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom when you're reading the Bible, and also to find a Bible-based church, one that you feel, uh, you know, I don't like the word comfortable because in America everything's got to be comfortable. Right. And sometimes you know we're going to go to church and we're going to hear things that are not comfortable, and that's good. Right. We need to. We don't need to be spoon-fed baby yes. food all of our lives. We yes. need to to uh, grow and be matured in our faith. Yes. So finding a church that uh, you feel uh, is speaking to you, that yes. you leave changed, that you leave uh, inspired, that you want to do something more for Christ, that kind of uh, a church. Absolutely. So Jesus said, um, go to the ends of the earth and make disciples mm -hmm. in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so that is the great commission that we all have um, in, in, as, as Christians, as believers. Um, could you talk to us about the cost of discipleship? What mm. does it mean to be a disciple? That's a wonderful question. I, what I was thinking of is all around the world, there are people who die for their faith. They cross the ocean to make new converts. Yes. They uh, live, you know, lives that are sparse because of their faith mm -hmm. uh, in different religions. And this is what Jesus is calling us to, not to be, you know, like he's not going to give us anything or we have to, you know, be destitute or anything like that. But we may not, we probably won't become rich being a Christian. It will probably be painful. It may mean separation from your family. Mm -hmm. We have experienced that in our family. Most of our family uh, shuns our faith, and but that's okay because Jesus says, if you put me first, if you yes. take your cross and you follow me, yes. that I will reward you for that. And that's the reward we're seeking. It's not from man. It is from Christ. And so you, there may be loss. Uh, you may be rejected at your workplace. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there. It's it's a great cost. Right. And in many parts of the world, they're suffering uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, relationally, financially from their from their commitment to Christ. Yes. But I just want to say that you will get a reward that is so much greater than anything you could ever want on this earth. We all have experienced uh, that money does not buy happiness. Uh, even your friends don't buy you happiness. We can't get contentment from uh, all the riches in this world, but Jesus can give you the contentment that your soul so craves. Absolutely. You mentioned about um, so many people we do have here in the West, we have the freedom to practice our, our faith mm -hmm. and to go to church, to freely talk about Christ to, to some extent. Um, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, at my school, at my uh, daughter's school, we, I can't just go up and talk about Christ right. or I'll be frowned upon. <laughs> and so I, I sort of see that as a sort of persecution here mm -hmm. as well, because we don't have complete freedom, although we do, the government allows us the freedom of speech, but it's just that you know it's frowned upon to just bring God in to school and things like that, which is very sad to me. And that just um, standing firm for Christ, being a true committed disciple, uh, even when you know there's a lot of resistance, there's a lot of probably rejections, um, that to me, that's the cost of being a disciple. Now, that in a scope of the persecution that Iranians are, yes. are faced with, yes. that is very, very minimal. Right. Um, you know, although we have s to some level that persecution, but when, when we hear about our fellow Iranians that come to faith and they, they because of the governmental restrictions, they can't really mm. practice. They're, they're going to be arrested. They get yes. persecuted. They, they're, you know, there's home um, raids and things like that that they 
they suffer, yet they stand firm for Christ and they will not deviate from their faith. And to me, that is priceless. That is like, that's the definition of uh, the persecuted church that they experience, yes. yet God protects them somehow. Um, you know, it's, you mentioned that, and there's definitely a cost to be a disciple of Christ. For those of you that live in Iran, and there is tremendous amount of persecution, probably fear, intimidation that the government has imposed on you. Um, there's also persecution here in the West as well. Unfortunately, the system is in a way that you have to be very cautious to even talk about God in certain settings as well. And it's getting worse. And it's getting right. worse. And but I've heard from the persecuted church uh, from stories that I've read, and I've, I've read hundreds of stories, that they, they ask the people in the West to pray for them, not to get them out of their situation, but to get them through. Yes. And I read one story about an Iranian uh, couple who came to America, and after a year or so, the wife said, I want to go back to Iran because this is not sharpening my faith. Right. In Iran, it sharpens my faith. Wow. It makes me a stronger believer. Wow. And so I think that America is uh, on its way to uh, experiencing more persecution. And I say, bring it on, Lord, because yes. we need to be sharpened. We don't need mm. to be this, uh, you know, weak, ineffective church sure. anymore. Lukewarm. We need to be the church of Christ. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've heard that too. Um, Dr. Sherry was mentioning to me an Iranian who became a believer and came to the States. Mm -hmm. um, she was talking uh, to Pastor Hormoz about it, Dr. Sherry. He, uh, she was saying that the, the presence of the Lord in the persecuted mm -hmm. church of Iran in our yes. gatherings so strong. Yes. And we can just sense his presence there. We, we can um, we can receive his anointing every gathering that we go to because of uh, he sees the persecution there. He is there to mend the brokenhearted. Right. He is there to comfort them. Mm -hmm. And so, but here we just take it for granted a lot of times, um, even though, um, you know, we talk about you know, the cost of being a disciple at every level, you're going to experience some, but, um, the persecuted church of Iran, while they're being persecuted, they're also experiencing great the great joy and the mm -hmm. presence of the Lord that comes That's with right. it. That's right. That's awesome. So why is it important for us to be, um, committed and not lukewarm in our, in our Christian walk? I would liken that to a marriage. Yes. Would you want your husband or your wife to just come home and go, you know, ignore you? Yes. And just walk in the door and, you know, go to their room or whatever and, you know, kind of talk to you once in a while and, you know, not do anything to prove their love for you. That's It's the same thing with Jesus. He's mm -hmm. like, I died for you. Yes. What are you doing for me? Yes. Not that we have to do it. Yes for salvation. Salvation is a free gift, but what we do is a result of our love for him. And it's like, it's not, what do I have to do with you for you today, Jesus? It's like, what do I get to do to serve you and to show you Amen. how much I love you and how much I'm grateful for the sacrifice that you made for me? Yes. I yes. know when my husband does something sacrificial for me, it just warms my heart and makes me want to love him all the more. Yes. And, uh, you know, so it's the same exact thing in our relationship. In fact, the church is called the bride of Christ. Yes. And it's for that very reason. And yes. the, the marriage is the, uh, it's sort of the story or the picture of yes. our relationship with Jesus. Yes. And he wants us to love him passionately and be completely committed to him. Yes. There's, no, there's no other joy. Uh, real quick, uh, my mother-in-law, she wanted us to just go have a vacation. Yes. Go stop your ministry for yes. just a minute yeah. and go have a vacation. So we went on vacation. And the day that we had the most fun was when we went around the island and we took my books to mm. the different churches and talked to pastors. And we just can't help ourselves. Right. And so this is the most joy mm. serving Jesus that yes. we have ever had in our whole lives. It is, it impacts everything we do. It yes. gives us the reason to get up in the morning and 
I just want to say that you can do this, mm -hmm. serve Christ wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever your situation. And I have been in some very horrible situations, so I understand pain and suffering and abandonment and rejection and oppression. Uh, and so I just want to say that you can have this joy and impact of Christ in your life and share him with others and get a joy that you will not be able to contain. Amen. It's a joy that we cannot even express. Um, what we talk about today is um, the love of Christ that um, he has for humanity. He uh, put on flesh and he came to the earth so that he could um, shed his blood for us to wash, uh, wash us all from mm -hmm. our past mistakes, from our past sins, from our present sins, and from the sins that, that may be there in the future. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. We're not talking about... Um, some sort of rituals that you right. wake up every day, read your word, go to church. We're talking about a personal relationship yes. that is only yeah. possible through Christ That's Jesus. Right. He says he died for us. So today we could boldly run to his throne and, and, and worship him and talk to him and have that personal relationship with him today that personal relationship is available to you through Jesus Christ. They say you become who you associate with. Right. You become like who you associate with. And so when you spend time in the presence of the Lord, when you hear his voice and have communion with him, you become like him. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a Christian, to be like Christ, to love the way he loves, to have compassion for people the way he he has compassion for to to walk the way he walks to talk like he talks to go where he wants us to go so today i encourage you if you hear this message do not harden your hearts allow jesus christ to to come into your life to take hold of your heart and your mind and to lead you to become a committed and good disciple of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you so much, Sharon, uh, you, for, for being on our program, for your book. I am excited that um, Fishers of Men is going to be translated into Farsi. Mm -hmm. And once that yes. is uh, translated, we will make it again available for our audience to be able to download and benefit from all that you had to say about discipleship and everything else that you were inspired yes, about writing you. this book. Thank you so thank much, you. Sharon. Right. I sure appreciate you. God bless you. All right, you too as well. Thank you. <laughs>